example of a craftsman style airplane bungalow. The house was completed by December of 1925. This house is one of the earliest houses in this area and this area is known as the Westwood development which was planned by Matthews as a new development for country estates. So you can see it has quite a large lot. They actually own two acres here. Unfortunately this development didn't grow quickly as Matthews hoped and building stalled in the area until after World War II. So there are only very few houses built in this area prior to World War II. In the first decade of the 20th century, the development of the city continued to the west of Little Rock with the opening of the Third Street Viaduct over the rail lines to the west of the city limits in 1903. This led to the annexation of Pulaski Heights to the west in 1916 and this extension of the Little Rock streetcar into the Heights areas. Because of that extension into Pulaski Heights, Justin Matthews saw an opportunity to create a new suburban development farther from the downtown center of Little Rock, but still convenient by automobile travel. So Pulaski Heights was more about the street line. This area is more about the um, automobile. The new national focus on the automobile as a primary means of transportation for the middle class allowed Justin Matthews and his real estate development company, the Justin Matthews Company and the Metropolitan Trust Company to search for undeveloped suburban land that had previously been seen only as fit for farm or timber land. In the late 1910s and early 1920s, Matthews purchased land all over Pulaski County with the intention of developing new areas for residential neighborhoods. The most well known of these early developments was Park Hill that was originally well to the north of early Little, North Little Rock. Matthews went on to create other suburban developments that Matthews attempted to develop south of the Arkansas River, including this one, the Westwood addition to the city of Little Rock. By 1923, the area was subdivided into individual lots and new curvilinear streets were laid out to provide access. In 1923, Westwood was also named in the platting documents filed with the Pulaski County Deeds Office. The site of Westwood, just north of Brody Creek, and northwest of Foosh Creek consisted of heavily wooded, wooded hills and valleys. The wooded lots and western location combined to give the area its appropriate name of Westwood. The division of lots and introduction of access streets cleared the way for the sale of these individual new lots for residences. And in 1923, late in the year, Justin Matthews began an aggressive advertisement campaign to promote the new available land. Relatively large ads and photographs of newly completed homes as well as land and home sale notices appeared nearly weekly in the real estate section of the Arkansas Democrat. Advertisements for Westwood would continue through the mid-1920s. Most of, many of the advertisements focused on Westwood's location along newly paved 19th Street Pike, the street now known as Highway 5 and Colonel Glenn Road. The 19th Street Pike was the main road to the southwest part of Arkansas, starting in Little Rock and traveling through southwestern Pulaski County, through Benton and Malvern, and then on to Hot Springs. Unlike developments to the north, Westwood was designed by Matthews to feature winding paved streets following the contours of the landscape. The paving of Westwood was a major component for preparing new projects for sale. In an advertisement from 1925, noted that winding roads of paving carry you through this remarkable addition. Matthews' efforts to page large swaths of urban and rural Pulaski County would eventually lead to trouble due to his role as both the developer and the head of the local paving district that mostly benefited his new developments. <laughs> um, there were quite a few advertisements in the, or articles in the paper citing this fact as why he should no longer be head of the paving districts. Um, Justin Matthews used the same development techniques at Westwood that he pioneered and promoted at Park Hill. They worked to build a limited number of houses on lots across the development in order to promote the new neighborhood. The new houses pr prompted traffic from potential homeowners, but also served to increase the surrounding property value of the undeveloped lots. This allowed Matthews to charge more from his remaining undeveloped land. The Matthews Story House is a rare intact survivor, survivor of Matthews' building campaign in Westwood. Although this development was touted as made up of, quote, miniature country estates at the price of a city lot, end quote, with all the city conveniences and plans for paved streets, waters, lights, phones, and sewers, 
only paved streets were realized and city sewer service and street lights were never installed at that point. Due to the economic hardship of the Great Depression, the eventual full development of the area was only accomplished after World War II and all of the larger lots that were left were divided into smaller lots more in line with common lot urban, urban lot sizes. The change in development can clearly be seen along the streetscape with older homes such as this one located farther back on the lot than the more recent uh, houses in the neighborhood. In November of 1925, Justin Matthews advertised a quote, wonderful new home for sale. Quote, wonderful new stone home for sale, built of weathered stone on a lot 55 by 214 feet, wonderful view, best surroundings, paved street, large living room, dining room, breakfast room, not a breakfast nook, it's in the ad, kitchen with pantry, concrete front and rear porches, Four bedrooms, two bedrooms with downstairs and two bedrooms with lavatory upstairs, eight large closets, three closets are cedar lined, mirrored closet doors, tile bath, built in pedestal lavatory, hardwood floors throughout a show place. $8,500 on easy terms. <laughs> Although the address is not listed, the description for this house fits perfectly with this floor plan and layout of the surviving features of the Matthew Story house. The Westwood development, despite Justin Matthews' best attempts to promote the area, only saw limited residential construction. And the house seems to have languished as a rental property for several years. The Matthew Story House finally sold to Mr. and Mrs. Robson Story in September of 1934. Robson Story was born in the United Kingdom in May of 1874. And after arriving in the United States in 1897, he eventually found his way to Carl Junction, Missouri. Here he married 20-year-old Emily Ventura Bray in May of 1899. In 1905, Emily's story died, leaving Robson with two very young children. In 1907, he remarried a Miss Dolly Hart of Jasper, Missouri. And over the next 20 years, the couple moved several times across the Midwest and, Midwest and South. Um, it, where, where, where he worked as a zinc miner and in several times um, also in the furniture industry. So he seemed to have a very varied background. Um, eventually they were in Missouri, Oklahoma, and Mississippi. Robinson and Dolly, now with several children in tow, moved to Little Rock in 1931. Mr. Robson was listed in local city directories as a Christian science practitioner with his wife as his assistant. And in 1934, Robson purchased this house on Ascension Road from the Metropolitan Trust Company, Matthews Real Estate Holding Firm. Tragically, Mr. Story died on January 4th of 1936, and Miss Dolly Story continued to live in the house until she sold the home to the Trimble family in 1938. Trimble then sold the property to the Saunders family in 43, and they lived in this home through the 60s. It's likely that the Saunders family added the small rental property to the rear of their house and the garage and workshop building on the other side of the house. Um, this is based on the construction of the houses themselves. We don't really know exactly when they were built. By 1965, the Blackwood family, who was the um, Jean Blackwood and Leslie, who was vice president of the Auto Club Insurance Agency, were living in the rear house, so the little addition, the rental house, according to local city directories. This area was annexed into the city of Little Rock on November of 1959 after a general election approved ordinance number 10987. This ordinance had been passed in 1959 on condition that it passed by a majority vote of the city during the next general election. And it annexed large areas north, south, and west of the city limits of Little Rock and included over 22 square miles that were newly added to the city at that time. Um, this added the Westwood addition, which is where this house is located. The house then went through several various owners from the 1970s to the 1990s, and the house was updated and the interior was renovated sometime after 2000. The current owners purchased the property in 2014. As noted before, the Matthew Story House is a rare craftsman-style airplane bungalow. The craftsman style grew out of the British arts and crafts movement of the late 1800s, and the American craftsman style was also a cultural reaction to the elaborate ornamentation of earlier Victorian era style homes, including the Queen Anne style. 
architects like Green and Green in California created this new American style that celebrated the arts and crafts movement as well as the family dynamic of the emerging American middle class. Frank Lloyd Wright would also echo characteristics of the craftsman style as he developed his influential prairie style. The popularity of this new design spread wildly with the publication of early examples in magazines such as Gustav Stickley's Craftsman, as well as Good Housekeeping, House Beautiful, and Architectural Record. These magazines let the um, style spread across the United States very rapidly. There are other good examples of the Craftsman style throughout Arkansas and in Little Rock, especially in the Park Hill and Pulaski Heights neighborhoods. And interestingly, once this story was uh, noted in the newspaper this week, we actually got a call from a lady who lives on Poplar Avenue in North Little Rock who has the exact mirror image house of this house, which we did not know about. Um, it's located in the Park Hill Historic District. The airplane bungalow form originated in the 1920s, and it obviously drew its name from the front facade's unusual massing consisting of a narrow second story that resembled the cockpit and windshield of an early airplane, and wide, often cross-gabled front story that resembled an airplane's outstretched wings. The national mania for air travel during its rapid development in the early 20th century led to a burst of airplane-related or themed items in popular culture across the United States and the development and use of airplanes during World War I and their subsequent use for airmail delivery led to the airplane becoming an important icon in popular culture. The full airplane bungalow form appeared in building magazines during the early 1920s, just as this popular interest in flying was starting. And advertisements for the quote, airplane bungalow, end quote, architectural plans capitalize on this intense uh, interest in the new world of flight. So it's a period um, style name. They called them airplane bungalows in the 1920s. This included in the Building Journal, American Builder, and Farm Journal, who all had plans published in their magazines. As I said, it's a sub subset of the larger craftsman style and can be seen in many residents from the 1920s through the 1940s. The exhibits, the craftsman style um, characteristics include the low pitched gable roofs, deeply overhanging eaves, visible rafter tails under the eaves, and the extensive use of natural materials such as fieldstone. The square fieldstone columns on the porch and the porte cochere or carport are also typical of the craftsman style. The landscape features around the house also conform to the characteristics of the craftsman style in their use of natural material and obvious execution by a master craftsman, craftsman especially the fieldstone bridge. So the bridge that you walked across coming into the property is, is contemporary with the house and was most likely built by the same stonemason who did the stonework on the house. Um, the first floor is, stud is fieldstone and the second floor is stucco with wooden accents include, including the rafter beam ends and six over one double hung wooden windows throughout. The house includes its original wooden windows and are now protected by exterior storm windows. Um, all of the gables are also infilled in stucco. The home sits on a concrete foundation and also includes a partial basement for storage. Um, the uh, house is composed of multiple gables with short sections and there are also a set of original ornamental metal ridge caps that top each of the gable roofs. As you can see the house sits at the top of its lot even though it is well back from the road and many of these uh, kind of stones and stonework you see around the house are pretty contemporary with the, the construction of the house. To the east of the main residence, so back toward the garage space, there was a small decorative rock lined pond that was surrounded by decorative planting beds. And some of these planting beds have been obscured by overgrowth, but the pond area is kind of still there. <laughs> Many of the significant features remain intact and the layout of the original spaces is still evident on the inside. The original hardwood floors throughout. Also, original picture rail moldings near the ceiling are still intact in many of the rooms. Closets throughout the house also retain their original cedar lining. Windows and doorways would also retain their wide, simple wooden ornamentation, which is typical of the craftsman style. A small built-in closet located directly west of the rear exterior door originally contained a built-in ironing board and is now used as a small pantry. Also, most of the interior, interior doors and windows are, are doors are, and have original hardware on the doors. 
The house was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 2015 for its significance as a craftsman-style airplane bungalow built by Justin Matthews in this Westwood development. <laughs>